Adding custom logic into your DGraph GraphQL schema is extremely simple to do and allows you to really extend what you're able to do within DGraph. I'm going to quickly show you how to use DGraph Lambda to create a calculated field in a GraphQL schema. To start, let's launch a brand new backend. Now for this tutorial, I'm in DGraph Cloud. I'm going to create a free shared cluster. My region will be US East. I'm not going to give it a name, and I'm also not going to give it an organization. I'll click Launch, and now my new backend is launched. From here, the first thing that we'll do is add in a very, very simple GraphQL schema. We'll come up here to the top corner and click on Schema. Then I'll add in my schema, which is an extremely simple schema just consisting of one type. The type is called student. Each student has an ID, which will be auto-generated, a name, an array of floats representing grades, and a grade average, which will also be a float. But you'll notice that I have an at lambda GraphQL directive. This signifies to dgraph that this field here is actually going to be powered by dgraph lambda. It will be a derived value from some type of custom logic that will live within dgraph lambda. So now that we have this here, we'll click deploy, and that will deploy this schema and will allow it to be used within our backend. Our next step is to actually define the lambda that will power this grade average field. So we'll click on lambdas. Then here I will erase this and I will create a lambda function which will basically give us a custom resolver. What you'll see is, is that I have a function called grade average resolver. It will receive an argument which is called parent and I'm going to grab the grades field from that parent. So this parent here is actually our parent type, which is student, and that would have access to ID, name, and grades. I only want grades, so I'm just going to grab that from it here. Now, we'll have a total, which is gonna be the total sum of all of our grades. We'll loop through that grades array, and then add to our total. And then at the end, what we'll do is we'll take the total divided by grades.length, which is the amount of entries in the grades array. Now, in order for us to make sure that this resolver gets attached to that field, we have to use self.addGraphQL resolvers, and we'll see here student.gradeAverage, and the resolver function will be grade average resolver, which we've defined above. Now, if I click Save, I will save that. And our last step here is to actually try and run a GraphQL mutation to add some data. And as part of that return object that we'll get from that mutation, I wanna bring back that grades average that we're gonna calculate. So here's our last step. Here, we will create a mutation, which we'll call add student and let me show you what that looks like. So we'll have mutation, my mutation, and then we have add student, and we have our inputs, which is name, Diggy, McDegraph, and we're also gonna pass grades, which is gonna be an array of floats. So 65, 61.2, 72, 91, and 99.9. .9. The ID that is part of that student type will be auto-generated, so we don't need to worry about that. Now when I run this mutation, I should get back the name, which we have here. I should get back the grades array, which we have here. And I should also get back grade average, which should be the lambda result of this array being brought into it. So let's click play. And here, what you'll see is we get name, which is the name that we added, we get the grades of that student, and then we also get the grade average, which what hap what's happening here is when we pass in this mutation or when we pass in query, that field for grade average will actually go to that custom resolver and bring that dynamic value back based on whatever grades are being supplied. 
just to show you a little bit differently, let's add in a couple more grades and we should see it increase. And we'll add another 100% here. And we will run this mutation again. So we'll add a new student. We'll call it Digimate Graph 2 and press play. And now you'll see we have Digimate Graph 2 and we have our grades here and our grade average has went up because we've added a few higher grades at the end here. So this is a dynamic field which is powered by a lambda resolver. As you become more familiar with this, you'll be able to grow this simple example into more complex lambdas that can power any custom business logic that you need for your applications.